Hi, I'm Todd Nock. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So, I'm starting a brand new three-part video series. This time I'm drawing Spawn. That's right, drawing Spawn on a sketch cover here. This is a commission for someone, so I figured this would be an excellent opportunity to finally draw Spawn. I know a lot of y'all have asked, when will you draw Spawn? Well, here it is. Today's the day. Let's get started with part one, the pencil stage. All right, so here we are. We're getting cracking. We're going to break down the figure here, just start roughing it in. Kind of had a pose in mind, and I'm using the 0.5 HB lead of my Pentel Twist Erase Mechanical Pencil. 0.5 lead because I like a little bit of thicker lead for when I'm doing the breakdown of the figure, the broad strokes. 0.5 works better for me than my 0.3, which is generally reserved for finer detail type work. Now, um, this is my third attempt at this uh, sketch cover. The first two uh, tries just didn't quite work. Uh, they just, I just wasn't getting the, the figure work down the way I wanted. I wasn't getting the pose down the way I wanted. So I like to cut my losses early. I like to, um, if I realize something's going wrong, I don't want to try to f keep going with it thinking, oh, I'll fix, somehow I'll miraculously fix it in, in, during the process. Usually, if I can figure out it's it's going sideways at the beginning, erase, start over. So this is so I've erased twice and have hit the third time. People, don't be afraid to use your eraser. Don't feel shame in that. It's what it's for. We're all humans. None of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. And the thing is, how do we deal with our mistakes or recover from our mistakes? So use your eraser and feel fine about it. Every pro does. I know there's this, I've talked to people, some uh, young artists, and they think that it's like, wrong to use their eraser. It's not. It's not at all. Let's just get rid of that thinking right now. So let's see. Spawn is uh, a deceptively detailed character uh, with his um, gauntlets and spikes which are challenging enough to try to figure out how to angle the spikes in the right way depending on the uh, foreshortening of the arm or, or legs, uh, the calves, how each spike has to point in a different direction. Chains, chains are very, very challenging to draw, um, and I'm sometimes challenging to say. <laughs> so, uh, but it's the really cool details that are signature spawn. And then, of course, I think one of the most signature aspects of spawn is his cape, his enormous cape with all these crazy folds. So that's uh, something I, I'm keeping in mind here as I'm roughing out the shapes, the direction of the cape, which I kind of have it. I'm gonna have it flowing off to um, our left. Uh, and even wrapping around his leg there uh, to kind of give a sense of that's how big the cape is. It's that his body could get easily wrapped up in his cape. But you know what? Somehow Spawn makes it work. And that is what makes it signature Spawn. So now uh, working on the, the uh, eye parts of his mask, roughing those shapes in. Um, so I used, looked up costume reference, uh, so I saw all sorts of Todd McFarlane, Greg Capullo, and a lot of the different variant cover artists take on, on Spawn in my research. I have not drawn Spawn in a long time. I did draw uh, Spawn for one page of the Bad Rockin' Company uh, miniseries I did when I first broke in in uh, comics, working for Rob Liefeld back in the early Image Comics days, um, issue six of... Uh, Bad Rockin' Company. So if you if you want to see my first professional spawn work, uh, you can grab that issue. Um, so uh, so it's been a long time since I've really drawn spawn in his entirety. So he's changed a bit. So I needed to look up that reference and really study different aspects of his costume to make sure I could translate it um, as accurately as possible through my style. So let's see. So now I'm just tightening up some of the details and I'm starting to uh, add the, the black areas to his costume. Just um, not heavily detailed black areas, just enough to where I know where the lighting is coming from, which is pretty much above, and um, where I'll want those heavier shadows. Uh, a lot of uh, young artists ask, how do you know where to put the, the, the highlight on a black costumed character. And the thing is, you want to learn your anatomy, keep studying your anatomy, and the shape. The shape of the muscle or the face, the, the shape of the head. There's our the top of our head, the forehead, then the cheeks. All those are different shapes and different planes. So the light will hit in certain ways. So when you know the shapes of your each individual muscle grouping or, or body part, it kind of helps. You want to think, and, and then you think, well, where if the light hits on the top, then the shade would be on the side or on the bottom. 
and like with leg muscles. Very challenging, but you got to study that anatomy so you know where the shape comes from. You want to create a sense of volume, roundedness, uh, weight in, in, in how you uh, put in those, those black areas. That's what it's there for, to really create volume of your character. So just adding a few more details here and keeping in mind the foreshortening of this forearm, uh, this left arm, as is that his? yeah, that's his left arm coming towards us, uh, throwing a few chain links here and tighten up some of these gauntlets and spikes. So we're on the tail end of the pencil stage here. Part two, the ink stage, will be coming up real soon, hopefully within the next week. Um, and I'll then have the Copic color video to follow more than likely the week after that. I hope to have a time-lapse uh, version of this one, a real quick one for you as well. Uh, so thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more art videos. Thanks for all the support, and I'll see you soon.